Hi, I'm Tony Calabresi and I'm a comedian. Some producer told me to come out here and make fun of the fact that I'm Italian. He don't tell nobody to do nothing no more. So Tony, you, you're one of my favorite comedians here in San Diego. I know. It? <laughs> and that's why, because you're so <laughs> spontaneous. Um, and, and the thing I like most about you is that is that you're so unassuming and, and really one of the most talented guys around. I appreciate so, that. The thing that draws me to you is that you work the way I do. You work pretty clean. So, I work clean. So why clean? I think it's, uh, first of all, very few comics are doing it. Um, so it's easier to get booked. You can mm -hmm. do church shows. You can do. You can appeal to a much wider audience than if you're working dirty. Mm -hmm. um, plus, it's just not something I want to do. I, I, you know, I like telling stories and, and talking about things that are mm -hmm. real in real life. And there's no need to make it dirty. You can, there's no need to swear. I can appeal to any audience, young and old. I mean, I do shows for there's you know eight year olds sitting in the front row. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing comedy? Almost thirty years. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a long time. As for a living, for the last seven, but mm -hmm. for. Yeah, you know, almost, th oh yeah, 29 years. So so you say for the last seven, what were you doing before that? <laughs> I was the president of a bank. So the president of a bank? <laughs> yes. So you you owned a bank? I didn't own a bank, I had shareholders. Okay. But I was the president of the bank, yes. Wow. Yeah. So people come in and say, you know what, I want to see the president because something is wrong here. That'd be me. With my, and they come to see you. And then I'd send them to the branch manager so I wouldn't have to deal with it. No. That's <laughs> No, I mean, my office was open to everybody. Yeah, I was, I was, I was a banker for a long time. So, I, so were you funny in the office? Always. I had toys. I had all sorts of fun things and gadgets in my office. I had a toy box for the kids when they'd walk in, so the kids could come to my office. I had a gumball machine in there. I had little electronic toys and stuff in there. So, yeah, I, I, you got to have fun at work, so, yeah. When was it that you decided, okay, I'm not doing the bank thing anymore. I'm going to just pursue this comedy thing? Well, anybody who's been in banking um, has been through what we call mergers. And after the seventh one, uh, they came to me and they said, Tony, we have an exciting new opportunity for you and a 40% pay cut. <laughs> and sometimes you got to take that severance package, Mark, and go out to the parking lot, slash their tires, and move on. But that's... <laughs> um, so, you know, and it's actually, they came to me and they said that. I, uh, it was still a lot of money. I, I don't know if you know this. Bank presidents make a lot more money than comedians. I could have stayed. But yeah. I thought, you know, I, this is my passion. This is what I want to do. I want to be a stand-up comic. I've always wanted to do this. Right. My kids are grown up. It's just me you know, my wife and I. And so then I went home and told her that I was no longer going to be making that much money. And then she That's threw a knife that. at me. And then um, she, no, she was cool about it. She says, what yeah. you want to do? I'll give you a year. She said, one year to just do stand-up, see if you make any money. And it's seven years later, I'm still doing stand-up. Yeah, yeah. It's a full-time. Not making any money. No, I'm not making any money. I like doing it. And, uh, what drives you, Tony? It's a 2011 Buick Regal, and that's... Not what do you drive. Oh, oh what drives me. What drives you? What makes uh, you get out of bed and, and do what you do? It's a rush. It's the adrenaline. It's the... When you get on stage, there's nothing like it. But I think the underlying factor is being able to make people laugh of all ages uh -huh. and when people come up you know how it is people come up to you after a show and they're shaking your hand you're the funniest person i've ever seen and uh -huh. you know and then until they see another show and then they like somebody else but in that moment it's you, know, you. it's a, it's you and so it's a it's an exchange between that audience of two three hundred people or even two people depending on some of the shows we've done in the past but that 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 feeling you get going back and forth there's nothing like it you know how mm -hmm. it is you just that that yeah it's a give and take it's a it's, give it's, and, it's, it's but it's a give and a give it's not really a give and take it's give give because they give to you and we give to them mm -hmm. you know and it's uh, uh that to me is what drives it it's a good you feel good after a great right. show you ever just flat out bomb oh yeah absolutely absolutely i've got some i we've all done those shows where you're in the you're in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong material and the wrong attitude I mean, I did a show, for a local show, it was a benefit show for yeah. a, the Escondido Humane Society, if I can say that, and uh, it burnt down, I don't know if you remember that. And so they did a benefit show, and before the show started, they had a video of the place burning down, and now it's time for comedy! <laughs> um, <laughs> there's almost, no way out of that. Oh, man. So, yeah. People that's are like, weeping, and you've got to go on stage. That's, almost, so we, that's worse than, like, like, my worst experience was like... Um, it was a party, I was a new comic, it, it, and whatever the hot song was, that was planned. And so they walked me over to the DJ in this ballroom and said, hey, uh, our comedian is here. Skrr! He puts the break on the song, everybody is dancing. And, and he that, says, yeah. we got a comedian. I said, dude, put that song back on. 
Yeah. You don't want to be in that situation. And they will then, hate you. And then introduce me like this. Say that. <laughs> Have you ever done a birthday party at someone's home? You ever done any of those? Yeah. I did one for a 40th birthday party. Think, oh, 40 year olds. A lot of 40 year old people will be there. It's in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. The amplifier was this big. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> that's how it sounds. And behind me was one of those jump for joys with all the kids yeah, yeah. of all the 40 jumping around. jumping around behind me. While you're doing your thing. While I'm doing my thing. With, with the Mr. Microphone. You got it. And a little, <laughs> and a little three year old comes up and grabs a hold of my leg like this <laughs> and won't let go for 20 minutes. <laughs> You know what it's, and I'm trying to drag this kid around like, hello, people, I gotta, you know. I mean, even that, that's not a bomb. They paid you, you me. Just, you just had, exactly, <laughs> you just had curveballs thrown at oh, you yeah. you're at. Have you ever had a, had a situation where you go out, you, you, you do your set, and nothing lands? Yes, yeah, I have. Explain how that feels. I don't know how people felt in Rome when Pope John Paul XXIII died. It had to be a lot like that. It was just... Uh, you know, just complete, right. and you're just sitting there going, I don't have any more material, that was all my material, that was the best material I have, and nobody's laughing, That's and right. you're the last one, you're the headliner, you know, and there's nobody after you, there's no way to save this. If you could pick one person, dead or alive, to feature for it. Oh, Rodney Dangerfield, no, not even a question. And why is that? I always wanted to work with him, and he passed before I got a chance to, and I came close twice to being able to work with him, and I just didn't happen and then he passed away and so he was always growing up you know he was the guy who really didn't get going until he was almost 40 right. and so I kind of felt kind of a kinship there and a lot of people say that when I'm on stage my mannerisms and stuff are a lot like Rodney's they uh, are and I don't try to be that's just me no it's just I mean kind and of the way you move but, but it's like you know it's, it's just one thing. and I've always thought he was so funny I um, worked with him at his club in Vegas, back at the El Rancho oh, Hotel wow. years ago. I was opening for a guy, Jimmy McGee, who I thought was hilarious. My sister came to see the show and it was like, Jimmy McGee, breakfast special, $1.99. <laughs> Mark Chris Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Rodney, I spent an epic night with Rodney. So uh, there's a guy, Dutch, who was the showroom runner, who was clearly like the last bastion of Mafioso Vegas. There's no such thing as the mafia. I, I just said mafioso. I'm just saying this. Just don't get I into that. I didn't say that. There's just the legitimate mafia. Italian businessmen that have been persecuted by the federal government, and I don't think you should go there. Uh, We're in a nice Italian restaurant. Well, don't Dutch going. was one of those guys who was just a nice Italian businessman who wasn't <laughs> mafia per se. Uh, he says to me, he goes, he says, he says, uh, listen, I sent everybody else home, so you're gonna do 30 minutes and then introduce Rodney. I said, okay. What should I say? He goes. It's Rodney Dangerfield, just say his name. <laughs> you don't need to do any kind of intro at that point. So, I finished my set, I introduced Rodney, ladies and gentlemen, Rodney Dangerfield. He comes out and he goes, how about a hand for my son, Marcus Warren? <laughs> and at the end of the night, we hang out all night. Oh, wow. We bounced all over Vegas, hitting clubs and restaurants, and like we'd go here for, for an appetizer, then we'd go over here for dinner, then we'd go over here for dessert. And it was so much fun. The sun came up. Well, it's Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah. And I'm hanging out with Rodney Dangerfield. And, that's, and, that's living. And Dutch. That's living. The okay. not mafia guy. The not. Don't start. I said not. All right. Let's, the not mafia don't, guy. Don't go there with the mafia. All right. Well, look. Let's, let's, let's go make a pizza. Oh, sounds good to me. All right. You go. You go. All right. I gotta get some thinner friends. It was great talking to Mark, but uh, let's face it, we're both here for just one thing the pizza. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that I would sell a kidney for a slice of pizza at the Venetian. And I have. Twice. Doctors are mystified how I'm still alive. All right, so so Joe, you're the proprietor, the proprietor of the Venetian restaurant here Mark, in, my brother in and Point I. Loma. They say that if we need to know how to make a pizza, you're the guy to come to. You do like what, thousand a week? Thousand a week. That's a lot of pizza. That's a lot of dough. That's a lot of dough. Now you make this dough fresh. Every day. Every day. Every day. And you've eaten it. Every day. <laughs> yeah. for, 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 <laughs> for thirty or forty years. Yeah, I've been coming here for I've known at Tony, least. Tony a long Probably time. Probably 40 years. Probably 40 All right. years. So, so we're going we're gonna to make a pizza right here, right now. Yeah, let's do it. Tell me what to do. Okay. What you have to start with, you must keep the dough round. 
We don't want any footballs. Okay. We don't want any squares. Okay. This is a round pizza. Round. Okay. A little kneading. Go ahead, copy me. A little kneading. Get it out there. Come on now, Mark. Get a little muscle in there. Mark, come on, get those triceps in there. Oh, Mark, you're babying it now. Come, come on, on, man. Switch with Look me. Look how Ready? fast he did that. Okay. All right, Mark, a little flour. Now, here's where you got to do the frame. Hands like this. Get that, get that push baby it out. out. Get push that it baby out. out. Yeah, there you go. Hey. See, I only use one hand because it's so big. There we and go. Then I just go like that. Tony, why don't you sauce that out, brother? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, give me two and a half scoops on that. How did you get yours all over the edge like we that? Have four decades of doing it, my friend. Gotta go, get to put it around yeah. like that. Gotta, yeah. gotta put it How's around. that? How's that look? Uh, Close? For, a, for a small dough, be good. I'm gonna finish it up for you, Mark. We're gonna just gonna get that baby. Oh, I don't know. You see, you should have said smack it like you're smacking something. Oh, yeah. What's it? Okay. What's, all right. There you go. Do it. So then, so then, that's a sauce. So then you get a little Two sauce. Scoops. Don't make a mess. Don't be afraid. Oh, look at that. He went over there. He did. One. He did it. Then he dropped. Two he didn't spill a drop. Well, I'm a fat guy. Yeah, fat, we are by far the two guy biggest don't. guys they've ever had in this kitchen. Guys don't. All right. Good, good, good. Good. Leonardo da Vinci painting. Use that brush, baby. All right. I'm liking it. All right, let's put some right. coffee down right. Come on. Get involved. What, what, do you, what do you want? What do you want Go on the pizza? Go ahead. The crew's going to have I it, so. Wanna... Pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms. Okay, Go so ahead. what goes first? I do the pepperoni. Go ahead. Do like a blackjack deal. Deal it out, man. Deal there it out. Go. There you go, Tony. You gotta, Tony. you gotta grab it and you gotta like create some Come space on, there. You know, just put it out there, man. There you go. Just deal it. You gotta deal it out there. Deal it out there. Hey, baby, hey, baby hey, needs hey. new shoes. You know what Boom. I mean? Hey, forget about it. All right. You know? There you go. All right. All right. Sausage. Little sausage next. Oh, there's a nice piece right there. See? Okay, good. There you go. All right. Put a little more in there. Mushrooms, if you like. Cheese them. Let's put them. I love the mushrooms. Let's put them in the oven. Cheese. Cheese, there you go, Tony's home. Speed. I want you to start at 5 o'clock tonight. All right, I can do that. All right. I, can, I, I haven't forgotten. It's been a while. Right. A little yeah. bit more, a little bit more. Mark's got it down for his first time. It's not bad. But I know what I like to eat. All right, looking good. Good. That looks okay, good. I'm going to open the doors for you. We're going to pop them in the oven. Ready? I'm ready. Don't burn yourself. I'm not going to burn myself. Here we go, Mark. Keep it. Mark. Just slide it in. Don't burn yourself. Don't touch right. your hand on the got, got it. Perfect. Nice. One more, Tom. Perfect. There you go. Good job, That's guys. Nice. That was That's good. That's how good. you do it. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to make you Italian. Hey. You know? Forget hey. about it. Hey, hey, hey. Nice job. That's, and that's how you make a pizza. Well, that's how Mark makes a pizza. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We appreciate it, man. You're welcome. My pleasure. It takes nine minutes to cook that pizza. You know how in old cartoons, two starving guys on a boat would hallucinate and imagine each other as food? I ate Mark. That's what I'm getting at. I ate Mark. That was fun. All right. Well, we made it, you know, with our own hands. Yep. Let's see, see how they look, how they came out. I'm ready. There you go, boy. Oh, 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 oh. What are you going to eat? Hey, easy there. Look, I made a pizza. With the mushrooms. I, I want to just fold it over like a sandwich. And that's, how you, that's what I tell my wife. She goes, you can only have one slice. Okay, don't cut it. <laughs> you know? All right, I'm pulling a piece off and see what, see what it's like. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. If I had to do all over again, I'd double up on everything. This is amazing. I make really good pizza. I make better pizza. It's made with love. And sausage. Are you one of those people that eats ham and pineapple on a pizza? Ham and pineapple? I want to slap people when they order that. Mm. It's like putting the sugar on grits. So it turns out the editor for this show apparently loves ham and pineapple pizza. And he'd like me to take this time to apologize for my remarks. So on his behalf, I'd just like to say to all you pineapple pizza lovers out there, you're terrible people. I don't care if you are standing right there. You're a horrible person. Pineapple and pizza? There. Now that I've alienated 46% of our audience, here's me doing stand-up. Welcome back to Pure Comedy, brought to you by PureFlix.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend, Tony Calabrese. Hey, 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 what's up, man? How are you, buddy? How you doing? How you doing? I don't really talk that, that folks. I'm just playing around. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I, I'm so thrilled right now because, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a guy who's been married for 39 years. 
in a row. A lot of my friends, they say, Tone, 39 years. How did you know she was the one? Well, I married my high school sweetheart, you know? I, I wasn't looking for the one. I was looking for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel sorry for people today. They gotta do all these app things. They gotta swipe up and down, left and right. We, they gotta make up fake profiles, you know? We didn't have to do any like that. When I, look, if my wife wanted to see my profile, <laughs> this is it, you know? Granted, four, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, it was a lot thinner, a lot taller and everything. But, you know, what are you going to do? And my wife, my wife's Portuguese. I'm Italian. Now, Portuguese looks like Italian light, you know, like, you know, less temper, more hair. You know, it's just like, you know. And so, you know, like, like when I wanted to marry this woman, I had to do a very traditional thing with traditional families. I had to go to her house and in front of the entire family. I had to ask her father permission to marry his daughter. Right? Traditional, you know, traditional. Then I had to go to my house and ask my mother for permission to marry that Jezebel, you know? <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm talking about menopause, you know? <laughs> That's a Latin word. It means, men, you might want to pause. <laughs> before you do anything that's gonna tick this woman off, right? And let me tell you something, folks. After 39 years of marriage, I know what'll tick a woman off. I just can't stop doing it, you know? <laughs> it's called breathing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my wife, she has these hot flashes and these mood swings, and you'd think after 39 years of marriage, I'd be like a wife whisperer, you know? You would think that. So I, I try and calm her down with those sounds that Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer, uses that. <laughs> Don't do that. You know? No, she bit me. <laughs> yeah, we celebrated our rights of marriage on June 10th, 1978. They call it the rights of marriage because right after the ceremony, I had the right to remain silent. <laughs> Because you women don't forget anything, you know? You don't. The other day we were in Walmart, right? Because, you know, I got that kind of cash, you know? <laughs> All of a sudden, my wife, she hauls off and smacks me in the back of the head. I'm like, what the heck was that for? You were looking at that girl. What girl? The one at the zoo. <laughs> we haven't been to the zoo in 12 years. <laughs> and my wife basically lives to make me feel like an idiot, you know? And I try and help her out as often as I can. You know, to, Honey, I can't find my keys. Oh. Well, did you look for them? <laughs> no. Hadn't thought of that, you know? Looking for my keys. You get the best ideas, babe. Then she goes right to my keys. Why? Because you women hide stuff from us. <laughs> you don't call it hiding. You put stuff away. <laughs> There's not a man in this room that knows where the magic land of away is. It's some place between bed, bath, and beyond and Ikea, you know? I left my keys on the bar. Now they've gone away. <laughs> hey, guys, if you've been with the woman for more than three minutes, right, your stuff's going to start to disappear, you know? And weird stuff of theirs just start showing up. It's true. The other day, I found a little ping pong paddle in my shower. My shower's not that big. I'm like, what kind of game is she playing in here, you know? It's like, do you still got to win by two? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, maybe it's part of some new diet. Uh, you know, eat a cheeseburger, take a shower, smack your butt with a paddle diet. I have no idea. <laughs> I come out and, honey, what, what, what is this? She goes, you moron, that's a foot file. A foot file. <laughs> Guys, that's how they get their feet in their pointy shoes. They're filing their feet. <laughs> how are we supposed to understand this stuff, you know? How are we supposed, there's no... How come Rosetta Stone doesn't come up with something to translate that? That's all I'm asking, right? You can learn Swahili in seven days, no problem, but understanding women, not gonna happen. You know? I don't mean to pick on the women. I love women, I do. I, so much so that I actually believe it's about time we had a woman run in this country. Because if we had a woman, yes, I believe that, because if we had a woman run in this country, there'd be no more wars. We just wouldn't talk to other countries for a while. <laughs> And she'd balance the budget, because we'd buy all of our weapons on sale. <laughs> I have a coupon. Heck, a woman would have found Bin Laden in about 30 minutes. She would have. Well, General, 
Did you look for him? <laughs> Got to figure out what I'm going to do for my anniversary. We're, I think last year we went to Maui, you know, so, yeah, I don't know if you've been there, but uh, um, all those cute Ken and Barbies, they don't look like that. Everybody there looked like me, you know? Who knew that Paradise was full of fat wops from San Diego, you know? <laughs> And my wife wants to do stuff. I don't want to do anything on vacation. I want to relax. She goes, let's take a helicopter ride. Yeah, yeah. You know what they do? They show you a safety video so you can learn how to unlock the helicopter door, which is good to know when you're over a volcano, okay? <laughs> then they ask you a list of questions. The last question is, how much do you weigh? My wife weighs by 20 pounds, right? There's four of them and me on this flight. Every one of them's lying about their weight. There was one woman, she had to weigh 180, 190. She's like, I weigh 130. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm doing the math, right? By the time the guy gets to me, it's like, I weigh 500 pounds. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You've been awesome. Give me, give me a little bit. Give me that big hug, buddy. Great job, buddy.